Another fine day here in the QC, and I'm so glad to see it. I hope everyone is well today and they're able to get out, as I always like to say. Hopefully it's clear and sunny in your neck of the woods. Because here in Charlotte, it's quite cold and rainy. But I'm not complaining. I like these days, too. These are good days to be in the house with a big bowl of soup <laughs> and some heat. But yeah, I had to get out, so I thought I'd go and do this quick video on what's, what was on my heart, what the most I laid on my heart this morning. And it was, do you know how much I love you? Or do you really know your worth? Do you really know your worth? And actually, I put it in a title form, the thought in a title form of child of God. Do you know, do you really know your worth? Child of God, do you really know your worth? And as I was writing my notes this morning, and this thought became, I mean, this thought begun to come together. It really reminded me of what um, Amore was teaching on about the differences between the church mentality and those of us that know that we are the real true Israelites, the Hebrews. And he made one point that really caught my attention. Really, the whole lesson was um, all inspiring, I guess you would say, but he made one point that really stuck out, and that was of us understanding his love for us as his children. Because we sometimes forget the fact that we are the actual children of the Most High, children of the Creator offspring of the creator and I know that's hard to fathom sometimes I know it is for me as far as being born to a physical mother and father but as we come to find out we're first spiritual beings because we came from the spirit the most high we all come out and from him all things were made by him and came out of him and all things up, are upheld by the word, by his word. So, as I began to think about that, I began to think how valuable I must be to the Most High for him to make me an individual with a plan and put out here on this earth to walk out that plan. And it's hard to really understand at times. I know it is for me because I be like, he really have time for me after all these great creations he made but yes he does he does even so to the point that he knows how many hairs are on my head <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna even gonna go there because I don't have so many. And the ones that I do have, they're constantly slipping off, falling out. So that is very inspiring to me also because it lets me know that he even knows when I'm losing hair. He still knows how many 
hairs on my head. It didn't say he knows how many he sent me off with, how many I started off with, or how many hairs my head can hold. It says he knows the number of my hairs. And also it says in the text that he has my tears in a, in a, in a bottle, in a valve. So that lets me know he cares about what happens to me and he cares about when I'm crying. And that each tear he has put away for safekeeping. And I think basically it show me when I get in his presence for him to show me that, see here, this is how much I care for you. I even kept your tears. And see, the point about that is he don't even wait until we get there for him to show them to us. He'll tell us now. See, this is how much I love you. This is how much I care for you. This is how much I'm in your corner and want the best for you. But also, as I wrote in my notes, we don't always want the best for ourselves. And we don't always want to follow the instructions of a loving parent who has years of experience so that they know better. And that's what I wrote. He, he has an eternity's past, an eternity's present, an eternity's future of experience. Plus, he knows everything. So basically, he knows what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how it's going to happen to each and every one of us. So he's made arrangements for that. And it's up to us to get in line with him. Because just as the prodigal son learned a hard lesson of not following up his father's wishes and going out, taking his inheritance. And what the most I put across my mind at that time when I wrote that down, he said, we go out and take our, our gifts into the world and use them for the world and let the world rape us. Then we come back with our heart in our hands, begging to him <clears throat> like the prodigal son did, as <laughs> asking him for some work. And he like, for some work, you're my son. You know, I don't, I'm not gonna put you to work. I'm gonna put this, this robe on you and this ring on you. But that's just a picture of how the father is calling back his children. Because he too had to send us off into slavery for punishment, for being hard-headed. And see our Pastor Kenny at Restoration Center here in Charlotte, he brought a good point out in yesterday's Shabbat lesson. Yeah, he said that he brought out the point that the Most High in Script is always saying two things as a loving father. And that's how I, we are as parents. If, then. If you do, then I'll do. If you obey, then I will bless. And yes, it's conditional. We can't expect a loving father to, to bless us for our disobedience and he was speaking on the grace and the mercy of the father and how we um, define them wrong because that grace and mercy is as a loving father because you wouldn't tell your son who just disobeyed you that he's forgiven and you're going to bless him Anyway, you know, you're going to punish his tail and say, this is why I'm punishing you. And this is why you can't have what you want because you're not ready for it. See, I had to learn that lesson too in, in the most high dealing with me. Because a lot of times my um, hard-headedness was proven that I wasn't ready for the blessing. He was basically saying, okay. You're showing me that you're not going to be able to handle it. 
by your actions. And after I learned that lesson, it was good. It was good for me that the Most High punished me like I think David said. It's good that he didn't bless me with, with what I know he has for me. Because I wasn't walking in obedience to the blessing or to the instructions that received the blessings. The if and then. The if and then. Because all of our relationships are conditional, whether we know it or not. Just like in our marriages, we know that if we do what we're supposed to do, we're going to have a happy home. And if we don't, then we're not. And I already used the analogy of a child. And see, just like I was telling my grandson, Sometimes you just want to reach out to your grandparents or your parents and let them know you're thinking about them. You don't have to ask for anything because they already know what you need, but it makes them want to go, go overboard before you do the extras for you. And not saying that he doesn't do that already, but you know, every now and again, we need a, a little reminder of what we could do, be doing better. Especially for folks that go overboard for you already. You know, we need to call them up and say, hey, I love you, I was just thinking about you. I don't need nothing, I just wanted to say, hey, I love you. You've been on my mind. And see when, we, see, when we do that, we not only make their day, but we give them the, the motivation to do for us even more. Not that that's our motivation for calling them and checking on them, but it makes them say, hmm, I sure appreciate that. When I get a little extra, I'm gonna do this for this person. I'm gonna do that for that person. And see, that's how it is with our relationship with the Most High. We don't, we don't need to always come to him begging and saying we need this, that, and the other. And like Pastor Kenny said, I think it was him that said this yesterday. He already knows what we need. And once we get out of the, the attitude and the, the focus of me, 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 and I, 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 then we could, and our needs are met, then we can put our focus on other people's needs being met. But it's all about our obedience. See, the Most High needs us to be obedient so he can bless other folks through us. But how can he send out a shepherd that's only going to be a hireling? <laughs> that's not really caring about the sheep. He's caring about the, 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 the tithe money. He's caring about the offering, the collection plate. And if he made this much, this amount not. Just like when we was in the Baptist church, they used to have two or three offerings or two or three calls during the offering time. Be like, we qu ain't quite got what we needed. And, and basically, strong arming people to, to give them more money. And see, that's how it is with us. We want to strong arm the Most High into blessing us, but we don't want to follow the rules, do what He tell us to do. And that's a sad song over time because you begin to think that the Most High don't love you. But if we will follow through but what he says in the book will be all right. See, we have a, a messed up conception. That's not even the word I wanted. We have a wrong, the wrong image of the Most High through our teachers and mores. They're giving us the wrong perception of the Most High. We'll put it that way. But it's up to us to study to show ourselves the fruit. And this is the most important way we need to show ourselves approved to the Most High. In our obedience to His Word. It's simple and plain. Okay, you wrote it. I believe it and I'm doing it. Wholeheartedly. And also, I... 
Sister Jasmine brought out a great point yesterday too. Doing our Sabbat services, she was like, "The Most High loved us so much that He will put the punishment on us as a loving Father, and we are, are identified by those punishments, which are the curses." And the text says that they will be an identity identifying factor throughout eternity so yes we're wearing them scars but but even though we have our 400 years of um, punishment are over and we are now coming out of the, the curses into the blessings because as he said, if you would do this, this is what I would do. If you do this, this is what's going to happen. <clears throat> but I just wanted to come on today and remind us how much the Most High loves us. How much he cares for us. And like I said in the beginning, how much he's in our corner. But it's up to us to, like I always say, submit and commit to the Most High's plan and will for our lives. And commit to walking it out. Well, submit to his plans and then commit to walking it out. And it sounds easy at times, but like I said in my notes, we are a stiff neck, hard head people. And I used to <laughs> wonder what my mama meant by that when she used to call us stiff neck. And that's, you don't want to turn. You don't want to turn you one way. I'm going to do it my way. I don't see nothing else. And matter of fact, you don't even see anything else. Because all you see is your will, your way, your how, and only what you need and want and desire. But the Most High, He's not going to go along with your plan. He's going to let you wander on off like the um, prodigal son. But see, in our case, he scattered us to all the nations. And oh yeah, I, I can't forget the nations, the heathen, that he's upset with. Because they added harsher punishment on us than he, he desired. Basically, they took it overboard. They are taking it overboard. But like I said, that's gonna be my time. Shalom.